Linear equations have variables with no exponents, so when you graph them, they look like a line. Something like this, or maybe like this, or even like this. And when you're solving linear equations, you could have just one variable, but sometimes you have multiple variables. And a good rule of thumb here is when you have multiple variables, you need to have the same number of distinct equations as you have the variables you're trying to solve for. So for example, if you have an x and a y, or two variables, you need to have two distinct equations in order to solve for both of those variables. Let's look at a few examples. 8x over 12 equals 2. Okay, we're trying to solve for x here. The first thing we want to do is get rid of this 12, and the easiest way to do that is multiply both sides by 12. So we get 8x, because these two cancel, equals 24. Then we have 8x on the left side, and remember we can divide by 8 here to get x by itself. So divide by 8, and we get x equals 3. Okay, and we have our answer. Let's look at another. Nine x over three equals four plus x all over six. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. We have variables on both sides, and we have what looks like two fractions here. One fraction equals another one. One thing you should always be thinking here is you can cross multiply. Okay, so we can cross multiply by multiplying nine x times six, and then three times four x, and setting those two equal to each other. So let's do that now. So nine x times six is 54 x. And then we have equals three times four plus six. Don't forget your parentheses here. We're multiplying that three by both the four and the x here. Okay, so we have 54x equals, and let's bring this down and then expand out here. So we get 12 plus three x. Okay, so now we again have variables on both sides. We want to bring them all together. So let's take that three and move it to the other side. So let's subtract three from both sides. We get 51x equals 12. Okay, last step, we can divide this by 51 to get rid of that 51, and we get x equals 12 over 51. We can actually simplify this to 4 over 17. It's always good to brush up on your multiplication tables as well as your ability to do some simple division, addition, subtraction in your head because you won't always have time to do these things in your calculator and you need to be able to do some simplification of fractions like this in order to find the right answer. Let's look at another example. So we have two variables here, x and y, and we also have two equations. So in this case, it's going to be easier if we start with the equation that only has one variable. So we'll solve for x here using 8x equals 56. So to solve for x, we can divide both sides by 8, and we get x equals 7, right? Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now we can plug in our x into our other equation and solve for y. So we get 7y equals 21 because we took this 7 and moved it here. 7y equals 21, so now we can divide by 7 and we get y equals 3. Okay, so we've solved for both x and y. Now on questions like this on the test, you want to make sure that you know which variable or variables they're asking you about. They might sneak it in and say they're looking for y and then you thought you got the answer because you solved for x. So make sure you're paying attention to which variable they're asking you about. Let's look at another example with two variables. We have x plus 3y equals 19, and then another equation that's negative 2x plus 2y equals 2. So again, we have two variables here, and we can also call this a system of equations. There's definitely a few ways that we could solve this one, but let's just start with one of the options. So what the first thing that I notice is that we have a negative 2 here, and then we have a positive x on the top. And one option we have for solving system of equations is to add them straight down like this. So if we wanted to do that, we'd really want to cancel out one of our variables. And we actually could do this if we multiply our first equation by 2 and get a 2x here on the top. So let's start there. So we're going to multiply this by 2, and I'm going to bring this down here. So we'd get 2x plus 6y equals 38. And then our bottom equation will stay the same, negative 2x plus 2y equals 2. 
Okay, so now let's add straight down. These will cancel just like we wanted to, 2x minus 2x. Then we get 8y equals 40, right? Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far, right? We can divide 8 by both sides, or divide both sides by 8, and say y equals 40 over 8, which is 5. Okay, so we've solved for y here, but again, they may be asking us about x, so let's make sure we solve for x here as well. So a couple options here. We could go ahead and just plug in our y to either of our equations to solve for x. And I'm gonna pick the easiest one, so I'm gonna use the first equation here. And we could do x plus three times five equals 19. Okay, so we have x plus 15 equals 19, and we could subtract this 15 from both sides and get x equals four. Okay, so now we have both our y and our x variables here. So that's one option to solve this. Um, I'm gonna show you another option for solving this system of equations here. So another thing that we could do here is solve for one variable in one of our equations and then plug in. So it doesn't look so bad to do this for the first one. We could just isolate x and then plug in to this equation for that x. So let's start with that. So let's look at this equation here and let's get x by itself. So we'd have x plus 3y equals 19. We could subtract that 3y over and say x equals 19 minus 3y. Okay, so now we have this that equals x. We have x in terms of y. So now we can plug in here. Let's plug this into this equation um, where we have x. So negative 2 times 19 minus 3y, because this is our x, right, plus 2y equals two. So now we're getting an equation all in terms of y that we could solve, right? So let's multiply this out. We would get negative 38 plus six y plus two y equals two. So remember when you're multiplying a negative times a negative, it turns into a positive. So let's simplify a little bit. Negative 38 plus eight y equals two. Okay, let's move this negative 38 to the other side and get 8y equals 40, because we're adding, and then we get y equals 40 over 8, which is 5. And that's the same exact thing we got originally. So we know we're doing this right here. We got the same answer both ways. And we could, again, plug in this 5 into one of our equations and solve for x. So that's another option for getting our answer here. And there is a third way that we could solve this one. I'm going to show you here just to demonstrate the different ways that we can solve systems of equations. And then it's really up to you to decide which way makes sense for the numbers that you're given. Sometimes one way will be really difficult. We'll have a lot of addition, multiplication involved. And another way might be really simple. So if you know the different ways that you can solve linear equations, you can save a lot of time on the math section. So let me show you this third way. So the third option is to set both of our equations equal to each other. And to do that, we need to set them both equal to one of the variables. So if we set both of our equations equal to x, for example, then we could set those equal to each other. So let's try that. So let's isolate x um, for both of our equations here. So we've already done this once for that top one and we got x equals 19 minus 3y, so that one's done. Now let's work on this one. Negative 2x plus 2y equals two. We wanna get x by itself, so let's move over that 2y, we would get 2 minus 2y, and then we have this negative 2 here. Let's go ahead and divide by negative 2 the whole thing to get rid of it. So dividing by negative 2 gives us x equals negative 1 plus 1y, or we could just say plus y. So now we have x equals negative 1 plus y here, and we could set this equal to this right here because they both equal x, so they have to be mathematically equivalent. So we have 19 minus 3y equals negative 1 plus y. Okay, so we're solving for y here. Let's go ahead and add over this negative 1. So we get 20 minus 3y equals y, 
And then we can move, let's move this 3y over here. So we get 20 equals 4y, right? And then dividing everything by 4, we get y equals 5. Okay, so same answer again. We got the same thing with the three different ways that we solve this equation. And again, I just encourage you to think about which option makes the most sense for the numbers that you're given here so you can save yourself a little bit of time. Let's look at one more example for linear equations. Okay, so here we have 4z equals 16, 2z plus 7y equals 15, and 3y plus 2x equals 13. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. We actually have three variables, so we should have three equations in order to solve, and we do. So let's always start with our easiest equation and just try to solve for one variable. If you're not really sure where to start, just do something and do the easiest step first. That will usually get you going and in the right direction, hopefully. So let's start with this equation up here. This looks like our easiest one. It just has one variable. So let's start by solving for z here. So we would get 4z equals 16. We can divide both sides by four and we get z equals four. Okay, so we've already solved for one of our three variables, which is great. Now we can plug that in, right? Let's go ahead and plug z into this equation here. So we get two times four plus seven y equals 15. So we get eight plus seven y equals 15. Let's move the eight over. So we get seven y equals seven, and then y equals one. Okay, so we've already solved for two of our three variables. Let's finally solve for x here. We can plug in this y to this equation, so we're just moving along. Um, let's do three times one, so three plus two x equals 13. Subtract over our three, and we get two x equals 10, and then x equals five. There we go. So now we've solved for the three variables that they've given us, x, y, and z. So just remember that you can always start with the easiest option first, right? Start with your simplest equation and then work from there. All right, now you're ready to tackle the practice questions for this section.